Okay, we're filming. All right. Why did we decide to do it this way this time, Moana? Because we don't want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're trying to eliminate blocks of being seen or heard. <laughs> yes. Now, we were just, we've been laying right here at this spot for like, I don't know, a long time. Minutes? Long yeah. time. And we had the intention. That's a Virgo Aries answer to me. 32 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Oh, true. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. We could make a meme about that. Yeah, How long you been here? But, uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, anyways, we've just been chilling here, and literally, like, this is our view right now. We're looking up at these trees, and we were gonna film a video, and then we were like, we should just continue laying here and chatting, and like, film what we're seeing. And uh, then we let a little a guy drive by vacuuming the sidewalk. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> Three times. Yeah. yeah, that was funny. Um, okay, I've got a question for you. No, I have a question first. <laughs> okay. So, I'm about to take a big trip. Milana is about to take many few trips. <laughs> She was just talking about how the universe keeps saying to you, love yourself first. And so my question for Milana is, in these next couple months, what are some ways you can think of or that you might set an attention to love yourself better? Hmm. That's a really good question because, like, with what I'm going through right now, the two main things that I've been focused on and that I've been like, oh, this is what I'm going to focus on to help like get me through this this tough time is number one my relationships like my friendships like you for example like we've been talking a lot more and like you've been there for me and I've just been giving a lot more energy to my relationships and then two creating content to help people like I really love putting myself into the service of others and serving but I haven't taken the time, like very candidly, to be like, how can I love myself? So that's actually a super good and tough question. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I've heard and seen firsthand how you keep throwing in yourself into your work and your purpose and spending time with others and I think there is a level of needing that like especially after you go through heartbreak or a really hard time um but like as the universe keeps saying and tells us like we do have to love ourselves still through it all even in the bad even more with within the bad and so mm -hmm. it's like I am wondering as your friend and I think it's like it'll settle me a little more too like thinking out there like What's Milana doing to love herself today, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what she's probably doing. Yeah. That's really sweet of you. Yeah. To, to think about, like, while you're on the trail. That it will help you feel more settled. It will. Because, in a way, I feel sad knowing that, like, I can't be around as much. And, like, check in and just, like, on any day be like, Hey, how are you feeling? What are you feeling right now? Yeah. The way I usually interrogate you. <laughs> yeah. So, like, knowing beforehand, I'll be like, oh, well, she's probably, I don't know, playing with her angel guides right now. Or something. <laughs> Talking to the spirits. Exactly. <laughs> Alone in my room with my eye mask on, <laughs> communicating in the quantum. That's right. So, I'll probably hang out in the 5D. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, honestly. The yeah, I feel like. What's something you can think about? What is helped me love myself the most has been meditating mm. like I think about the times when I feel the most love and like it really is especially when I do the long meditations and I'm just like so lost in the void when I encounter like such intense divine love um, and just like yeah it's a combination of receiving that love like from the divine and feeling so connected spiritually and remembering who I am like who I am is this like infinite eternal soul and when we're plugged into the 
virtual reality headset of this life, it's so easy to forget that. And even if we tell ourselves that, it's it's just words. Yeah. Like that's not experiencing it. It's not the action. Yeah, and I feel like when I experience it the deepest is when I'm in meditation, which is kind of fun to think about. Like, oh, you feel the most love when you're literally sitting in a chair in your room with an eye mask on, like doing nothing kind of interesting but like that is when I feel the most love and I think that setting aside the time and like being disciplined to like make the time for that also makes me feel loved because it's like me telling myself I'm worth it I'm worth making the time for so yeah it's you telling your maybe unhealed parts of yourself that you're worthy Mm -hmm. and like showing up for them when they didn't feel showed up for in the past or something yeah and so like every time you do it it's just a reinforcement of like i'm going to continue doing this and it's all happening at once right so there's still parts that's still happening right now where maybe a part of milana didn't feel shown up for but every time you do you're like no i'm gonna do it i'm gonna be here Mm. but i also do feel your energy like comes or like feels more settled or like you as a person like you you vibrate a different sense of feeling settled like when you are doing your like meditations like I feel like I, I noticed that within you like the days when Moana meditates versus the days when she doesn't mm-hmm. so what else um the other things that come to my mind are like coffee shop dates with myself yeah, those are so healing for you you love those. I really love those. Like, it just feels like I'm really romanticizing the moment with myself. And, like, I can do whatever I want. Like, I don't have to report to anybody or, like, make myself presentable or make conversation with anyone. It's, like, literally, I can make content if I want. I can read. I can, mm-hmm. like, chat daydream. to a stranger. Yeah, daydream. It's, like, whatever I want. It's just kind of, like eat a cookie yeah <laughs> or a donut I mean yeah those donuts are so good hopefully they have them tomorrow we'll yeah. go. <gasps> go bro tomorrow we're seeing Taylor Swift with donuts what the heck that's insane <laughs> I can't believe that's tomorrow literally 24 hours from now we'll be there oh my gosh wow today's fun it really is but yeah, I feel like meditating, coffee shop dates, um, doing fashion maneuvers, um, affirmations. I'm feeling like I keep getting this image in my mind of doing mirror work, like sitting in front of a mirror mm. and like doing affirmations, doing my EFT tapping, like looking in the mirror. So I feel like. Something speaking to you. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Yeah, only sporadically but i would say in the mornings i try to just do like eye to eye work like where i'm intentionally telling my like looking at myself in the eye mm-hmm. in the eyes and like saying like you are worthy you are strong like what you're what i want to accomplish that day or something and but never for long amounts of time so but i, I try to incorporate some of that mm-hmm in my life here and there sometimes I feel like we don't look at ourselves enough yeah or maybe some people are out there looking at themselves a lot I don't know but I feel like I haven't looked at myself a lot enough sometimes yeah we're just moving through the motions and we're like go 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 well that's also interesting to think about like because you're about to hit the trail for over two months like and I'm assuming you're not bringing a mirror (laughs) or are you that's wild not like a not like a makeup mirror no yeah so, like, are you going to see yourself at all? If I take selfies. Okay. Yeah, because you'll have your phone. Yeah. But you won't really be on it. Yeah. No, I, I feel like I won't really be looking at myself self for a while. Yeah. It's kind of fun to think about. It is. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Uh, how does that make me feel? Um, I th- well, I think I'm more focused on how I'm going to shift internally. So I haven't really thought about 
the physicality. I think for me, the physicality aspect comes more into play when I'm like, well, how will this affect my health long term if I lose like a dramatic amount of weight or this and this happens? But mm -hmm. um. But yeah, like with the. But also, I think there's also a different level of, like, I, sometimes when you look, eyes are some of my favorite body parts of a human because I think they're just like, I don't know, they're just, they tell you a lot. Like, you can tell when someone has sad eyes and you can tell when someone has happy eyes and you can mm -hmm. tell, like, even their awareness and, like, some people have, like, really glazed over eyes sometimes when you're looking at them and you can just tell that they're not there with you, that they're somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But, like, I have a feeling my awareness is going to change. And so looking at myself in the mirror, I might even see something different than what I've been seeing. So I guess that's what's coming to me. Wow. Like, oh, like there's, like, there, you're seeing something else just because your awareness of things and space and time has changed. By being alone for so long. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That goes back to that quote or idea or whatever of, like, like the world doesn't change it's your perception or like your lens that changes mm, and that reminds me of new york because when i went there for the first time for my internship i sorry for when i started goldman i hated it and then i go back this year and i see it from a completely different lens where i'm like this is such a freaking beautiful city same thing with chicago i moved away mm. from chicago i hated it there mm -hmm. I hate, i'm like f that city <laughs> <laughs> like literally I'm like and anybody would talk about it and I'd be like like you have got me effed up if you think I'm gonna say good things about it yeah and then I go back and I'm like wow this place is so beautiful and filled with magic and this and that like it's like things reflect to you back to like how you're feeling inside or where you're at so just another reason to never think take things per uh, personally because it's like those people are just reflecting their own life back to themselves and mm. sucks to suck to be reflecting such a ugly image or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like how people act is just how they feel on the inside. Can you think of a place or actually I can think of a place for you, but I'm not going to project. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you think of a place <laughs> that, you, <laughs> that, you, <laughs> that you go to and you're like, uh, nah. <laughs> yeah, I or can like, think of or multiples. I know, so can I. <laughs> That's going to be a no for me, guys. <laughs> I can think of three states right now. <laughs> well, countries. countries? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. Okay, can you think of a place where you used to think was awful, but now has shifted, and you're like, wait, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. Hmm. And you've revisited. She's like, no, but ask me in a when you're back <laughs> ask me next year hopefully i'm more developed oh my god um no that's a really good question i hmm i'm thinking of like multiple different places but it's kind of weird like i'll give utah as an example like i used to live there and when i left i was I had a really sad point in my life. Yeah. And I really didn't like it. I know. And I left and I've revisited. But still when I go, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I still have the feeling of like, this is not my home. I don't feel like truly comfortable here. Like it's okay for me to come for a few days and like pass through. But I don't feel like drawn to it at all. And like even when I'm there, I don't feel like that deep peace which maybe goes back to like the fact that I have more work to do within myself to, mm. to be able to feel like that sense of deep peace wherever I go. Mm -hmm. So, and not be like, so it might be reflecting some triggers back to you. Yeah, definitely. Shut up, Sandy. <laughs> That's a lot of triggers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. And it's the same with those other places. Like, Florida for example I have <laughs> multiple like traumatic experiences yeah. in Florida and like leaving Florida different parts of the state like it's it's a massive state but I do feel like the last time I went which was almost a year ago it was like last November 
I didn't feel specifically triggered going. I definitely thought about like, oh, what has happened before when I've been in this state? Like, mm -hmm. oh, those things. But then I'm like, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Do, do I particularly love Florida? No. <laughs> but not as triggery anymore yeah it's it's not super triggering it's just like but that's kind of cool yeah because i think for a while if you had gone back like right after your traumatic experience it would have probably hurt oh more. yeah for sure yeah i don't think i would have gone if if anything happened that i was supposed to go to there i'd be like no i'm good <laughs> so yeah Callie. Callie. Love Callie. <laughs> yes, you do. What, what about Callie? At some point you left. Has it always been a pretty place to you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always felt like home. Even when I leave or, like, go live somewhere else. It's always, like, my home. Do you think people feel... Do you think people will always... Do you, so do you think home is a conditioned thing? Like, someone that grows up in Montana, they were born and raised in Montana, so that is their home. Mm -hmm. Or do you think there's something specifically that draws you to a place? Because then basically, wherever your child or whoever is born is, like, and raised, like, do you think it's just an attachment to it? Mm. That's a really good question. Hmm. Well, okay, so, like, me, for example, I grew up in Southern California, but, like, I grew up an hour away from where I live now. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up inland, not on the coast, and we moved to the coast when I was in high school. Yeah. And that was when I really felt like, oh, this is home. Like, this mm. is a wonderful place. Like, I never felt that where I grew up. So... For me, I think it's really an energetic thing. Yeah. Like, there's something about the energy here. Here in Hawaii, like, I could totally... I feel like Hawaii could be a home for me. Yeah. Um, so, Same. that's how it is Same. for me. But what do you think about that? Oh, I've been wrestling with home in the last couple months because I'm like, well, now I'm going to go live somewhere else. And so, a definition I came up for myself is like, I'm at home with myself now and we're and but also I have found so like my predominant home has been with myself and so like wherever I've been I have felt at home because I feel like I've come home to myself and then I would add in that like my homes are now where my most treasured relationships are because even if I, let's say, end up in Utah, unless it has some of my key people there, I don't think it'll feel like home anymore. Mm. Or, I don't know, like, I feel like I could make Cali home, but, like, my predominant home now is, is, is with myself. And if I ever leave, like, my center, like, or start abandoning myself, it means I'm not at home with myself. So I can't ever really create a home anywhere else. Kind of like, if you don't mm. love yourself, then you can't really... And I think one day, like, even a family will have to be involved in that, like, and then family will be another level of home, so. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I'm at. I don't think right now I'm stuck on a place, but more at, my focus is, am I at home with myself? And then am, physically, am I living near people that feel like home and add to that feeling? Yeah. Of course, doesn't mean I want to be in Nebraska. <laughs> All alone. Who would want it? Yeah. <laughs> All alone. Or even with my favorite people. And I don't think my favorite people would end up in Nebraska either. So. Yeah. How do you feel like you've cultivated feeling so at home with yourself? Because that's such a beautiful thing to experience that probably most people never feel. So how, how have you done that? I just had a really bad joke, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I, I love the trauma jokes. They're so true. Um, <laughs> how did I cultivate coming home to myself? Yeah. Um, Feeling at home within yourself. I had a release. Well, fascia was a way. Mm -hmm. I re releasing so much of the energy that, that was like from my childhood trauma was so healing to me this year. And then also 
creating a trust within myself of like even when it was hard to speak my truth like I spoke it this year and even when it was hard to like draw those boundaries like this time even though it was hard I was like I'm gonna do this because it's hard because the last time when I chose not to do it just because it was hard I got burnt Mm. and it's like I'd rather do something that's hard and know and feel settled within myself that I trusted myself than to have shut my shut my intuition down once again and then be burnt down the road so I was like nah and now I and now and it's a muscle the more you do it the more you practice the quicker you get at like not dealing with bs anymore yeah but that's easier said than done Mm mm-hmm so I think you just have to really lean into like what you stand for and your values. I keep telling you that. I think, I think I've said that a lot today, but like yeah. I finally know exactly what I stand for, what I value, and I'm not going to let anyone tell me otherwise. Mm-hmm. Because it's like my truth, and that's the truth I want to live in. And I know it's going to evolve, but it's going to evolve aligned to my values and in alignment with myself, and not anything anybody tells me is my truth or anything anybody tells me I, I should live by yeah that's so empowering how do you feel like you arrived at your values by figuring out what they weren't Mm -hmm. and by also compromising the hell out of myself and realizing that I got to a place where I let somebody else dictate what was important I let somebody else tell me what was important to me and whether that was society I mean I, I feel like every part of my life just like every child is told like this is going to be important to you yeah and so many children just accept it Mm -hmm. and then those children become adults and now they're living a lie and then they die living a lie wow because they never were able to learn how to question it and every part of myself was told like sandy you're going to be this straight hispanic daughter that gets married to a man is a stay-at-home mom and maybe you'll get a career but your predominant thing will be raise a family and i was like well, how about I become <laughs> a queer woman that moves away from her family and breaks every rule in her household and um, <laughs> tells her parents no. And I don't know, like basically everything my parents told me I would be, I'm none of that. And so mm-hmm. it's the more I broke, the more I realized what my truth was. And so you have to, as much as you have to know what your values are, you also have to know what your values are not. Yeah. What do you think are some of your values right now? Oof, I'm just soaking in the truth of what you just said. Of like, literally, we're raised, programmed, especially age zero to seven. Like, we know that's full subconscious mind, just in record mode. Full emotional bodies, that's all we are then. Yeah, and it's like, when you're five years old, people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, already defining you as And if you're not saying something super successful... And they're like, no, why don't you think of this? Yeah, or they laugh at you. Like, someone says, I want to be a trash truck driver. People are like, ha, 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 LOL. Or artist. Or good luck with that, bud. Like, what? Good luck with that. Or a musician. Good Mm -hmm. luck with that. It's just a perpetuation of unconscious, like, fear-based programs. But you say doctor, and they're like, good for you. Yeah. And, like, as... As a small soul incapable of caring for yourself you need the approval of others of your parents so it's like you're just gonna be molded into whatever you think your parents want you to be and dr gabor says that it's because survival because technically you know that without your parents you might die so they're like wait if my parent rejects me basically your subconscious is saying well they might not care it and in turn i might die Wow. Even though that's it's dramatized, that is what the brain of a child is thinking. Mm-hmm. So they have to have that acceptance because acceptance means survival. Mm-hmm. Unacceptance means you die, you die out. So wow, you're just it's all programming. That's literally so true. In my last EFT session with my practitioner, we like did this inner child healing, and we went back to a traumatic experience in my childhood, and it wasn't even like an intense experience. But I had the most intense reactions. Hmm. It was like I didn't get an A plus on my art project in like second grade. And I had all these super intense thoughts about myself that was like, I'm not an artist. I suck at art. I can never do what I want. I'm never good enough to other people. Like all these super crazy things 
but it's like yeah children are extremely dramatic even if they don't voice it it's going on in their heads yeah i'm sure because i didn't voice any of that stuff i was just very shy and quiet and just accepted what happened hmm. but i don't mean to completely dodge your question about like <laughs> what are my values well it was good it was but, a good di- di- little what do you call that divergence um, i don't know it was yeah. a good just natural flow yeah that was good yeah I'm sorry your art wasn't good. Honestly? <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I thought it was great. I was shocked I didn't get my pause. That's what was so, like, disorienting oh, for me. so subjective. Because I was like, I am an artist. How does she not see it? <laughs> but anyways, as far as values, I don't know. I mean, there's so many places you could go with, like, what are your values? Like, um, Okay, what are your values when... You're talking about living in alignment with yourself. Ooh, living in alignment with yourself. Um, you know, I feel like something that came up for me, like, recently that is highlighting a value, kind of like how you said, like, basically, like, you can discover your values by being in an, in an experience where it's the opposite is true where it's challenge or whatever and then you're like oh actually i want this to be my value i think for me it's um never putting my happiness or my um i want to say like receiving of love receiving of validation receiving of affection or attention like never basing my worth and my inner peace on someone else yeah someone else's ability to give me that and I think I really lost that in my last relationship because the person who I was with was so over the top with like showering me with love in like every way yeah and so I just unconsciously accepted all of that and I didn't work on like loving myself or being like why do I love myself and showering myself with love like I was just receiving all of it so then when that went away overnight I was just like completely lost and I was like well where am I going to get all this love from (laughs) so as I'm saying this out loud it's also making me think like I don't know if I ever want someone to be overwhelmingly like showing me love and showering me with love because what does that say yeah it's like even if yeah i don't know because i just don't i don't want to be completely dependent on someone else to give me love and this is something i've talked about in past youtube videos and this is something i like tell my friends and stuff but i caught myself doing it Mm -hmm. so yeah i guess do you have any advice for practicing that because i know you've been in similar situations before and you've (laughs) made it out to the other side (laughs) we made it out yeah of the escape room yeah uh like how to not lose yourself in a relationship when someone is like very intense i mean you i think i think there's a difference i because you can say there's a difference between saying it and then putting the actions towards it Mm -hmm. but i think it'll take a little bit more knowing of like how will i not for example um i have to very intentionally set aside my own time which i think is going to be really good for you with like your coffee stuff and your fashion stuff and your meditations like don't compromise like if you sometimes i'm like okay if i'm compromising my health that means there's an imbalance somewhere because i stand for that so much for myself and i know that's how i show up best Mm -hmm. So once I'm compromising that, there's definitely an imbalance on, like, where I'm giving too much. Mm. Because I should be giving to myself first, no matter what. Mm. And as soon as I do that, I can correct myself. And that's what I've been doing this year. Is like, anytime I see that, like, my health is being compromised, because to me, my health is living in alignment with myself. Mm -hmm. I know that if that's disaligned, I'm giving too much. Mm. And so that's where I'm like, oh. Doesn't, I don't have to shame myself. I can just be like, okay, well, let's come back to it. Why'd this happen again? Yeah. And you know that 
the way that you operate best is by taking care of your health. Mm -hmm. So how did you slip up? And let's get back to it. Yeah. So it's more of, because you have to set those practices or else, or those routines or else it's just easy to say like, well, I'm going to live in alignment with myself. Yeah, but how? How do you, how do you live in alignment with yourself? Literally, this is so helpful because that's exactly where I slipped up with myself in this last relationship because like I I would always do my hour plus long meditations I remember. every night yeah but when I started dating that guy I stopped doing that because we spend so much time like on the phone together and like at night and I was like I totally justified it because I was like well I've been tuning my energy to love and to joy into like beautiful relationships and now I have it so I was like I'm just gonna experience that relationship and like it's fine if I'm not doing my long meditations but you could also put it this way I'm now saying that loving him is more important than loving myself Mm. and I'm gonna put aside my like self-care practice because if not then he might leave me or if not I might lose this Uh uh-huh and that's what I caught myself doing. I am going to make sure I'm there every night eating dinner with her, every single night doing this mm-hmm. at the expense of me not taking care of myself. And when I started shifting it that way, I was like, wait. And so I put that check into myself. I'm like, okay, when you catch yourself doing this, this, and that, that means you cross, you're compromising yourself. Yeah. That's so empowering. It's so but empowering. the right person is going to be like, oh, okay. No, I want you to love yourself first before you love me. Yeah. I want you to go do that. I want you to go meditate for an hour. Right. And chances are, I probably have to go do some self-care too. Literally. So I'll catch you on the other side when we're both better versions of ourselves. And we, when we're both our best versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And telling the universe that, like, the right person's going to come into your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, you want, at least for, for me and you, we want people who work on themselves yeah and to love themselves yeah so why wouldn't we love ourselves too yeah wow but it's also nothing to like shame ourselves about because it can be so easy to like well why did i do it it's like because you're human yeah and it's okay to make mistakes and but like um you can catch yourself next time Mm mm-hmm yeah I feel like that's a really good wrap-up point. The end. (laughs) Thanks for listening, guys. Comment below any thoughts you had from this conversation. And uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Whee!